One thing that breaks my flow when I'm iterating on my Blender Python scripts in VS Code is the fact that I need to use the command palette to run my scripts in Blender. Bringing up the command palette and finding the command that I need to make my scripts run switches me away from my script and breaks my flow. A while back, I was thinking, how can I improve this? To fix this situation, I wrote a Blender add-on to streamline this process and make me focus on my scripts. The add-on just watches my script and as soon as I save, it reloads it and runs it in Blender, removing any need for me to run from the command palette. Let me show you how you can set this add-on up for yourself and I'll show you some examples how you can use this in your own workflows. I have VS Code running here and I've opened up a folder. It doesn't matter where this folder is located. I want to add another folder right inside of this and you can name it whatever you want. We're going to be placing our add-on into this folder. I'm just going to name it my test and inside of that folder I'm going to create a new file, the double underscore init.py like that. And in the description I've provided a link for this add-on open that up in your favorite browser and copy the code and just paste it into this file that we just created. Go ahead and save it and you have you should have something like this. By the way, let me know in the comments if you want me to make a separate video explaining what this add-on does. I want to keep this video short so I'm going to be only showing you the setup and examples how you can use this. The main parts of this particular add-on that interest us and that we can configure is these three things right here. And that's the name of the script that we'll be iterating on, the path to that script. Right now I've set it up in a way that it's gonna be trying to find this script next to our init.py file, right? And here's the script name, right? So all of this is gonna be right next to it. Let's go ahead and create that file. Again, you can create file with any name, just make sure to update this part of the code. I'm going to create that new file. It's empty for now. And the next thing right here is the function that we want to call when we're reloading. For example, if you just make this none, it will run the whole script and that's it. It won't call into any function. Or if you want to call a particular function, you can use this and name that function. Of course, it doesn't support arguments, so make sure that it make sure that function doesn't take any arguments. These are the basics of controlling this particular add-on. Let's go ahead and write a bit of boilerplate in this script so I can show you how this works. Now I've written some basic setup code right here. I'm importing BPY. I have the main function right in and I have this if name is main, some basic setup, right? Uh, and now we're ready uh, to start running our Blender instance and iterating on our script. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select this particular init.py file and open the command, command palette and start Blender. A quick note here, make sure that the myscript.py file is in the same folder as init.py. During the first part of this recording, I actually added it next to the folder and not inside it. So it should look like this. Remember, we're using the Blender development extension that helps us iterate on our Python scripts and add-ons in Blender. I'm going to type Blender and then start. Select the executable I want to use. And let me go ahead and fit Blender and VS Code on the same screen. Usually I would be working on two screens to give more space for VS Code and Blender. But to show you that how this works, it's best to just put it, everything on one screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and select my script and you can see that we don't have anything in our script and uh, nothing has changed in the scene. And let's go ahead and update the script and add a cube into the scene. And as soon as I hit save, my add-on will see that and run the script in Blender. So watch this. And you can see in the outliner, of course, the scene didn't really change, but in the outliner, you can see there's another cube that appeared and I didn't run the script through the palette. All right, so, so if I move this using G, there's two cubes in the middle of the scene. Now let's continue to iterate and let's move the cube that we add into the scene on the Z axis. I'm gonna get a variable that's pointing to the instance of the cube that we added. I'm gonna get the currently active object and I'm gonna update the location on the Z and set it to, let's go with four, and I'm gonna hit uh, and I'm gonna hit save again. And look at that, the cube appears as soon as I hit save. Let's update that and say, let's 
set it to six, and you can see that the script runs again. See, I'm right in the flow, continuing to change and iterate on my script, not thinking about anything except that. But you can see that there's a slight problem here is as we iterate on our script, the scene is gonna get cluttered with things that we've modified and added. But there's a way to improve this by cleaning the scene each time we run our script. Let me go ahead and add the code that cleans the scene for us. And I went ahead and pasted in that code. It's just uh, these three functions right here that clear the scene. The main idea what this code does, it just deletes the current scene, creates a new scene, creates a new world, and basically sets everything up, deleting also the all the orphan data that was associated with the previous scene. Now, after this, uh, after I've pasted this in, I can go ahead and add the call to that clean scene function right before our code that we are iterating on. So let me go ahead and move this a bit so we can see Blender a bit better. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And you can see everything is gone from the scene except that one single cube that we're adding right here on this line. And now I can go ahead and start updating the code and it'll be automatically rerunning my script right then. And maybe you're asking, okay, this looks like I could iterate on basic scripts on empty scenes, but what do I do if I have a complicated scene that I need to work on with my script? Well, I have an example for you that covers that as well. And I've added code that imports a scene from a blend file. Uh, this code right here, these three functions. By the way, I have a, a separate video exactly on this code, so you can check that out if you're interested to understand any details what's happening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this remove libraries, which basically removes the linked blend files. And next I'll define a path to a blend file. And of course this path should be pointing to somewhere on your computer. I'm using the home folder. This will work on Linux, Mac, and Windows. I have a temp folder there and then the ob an objects blend file that contains some objects that I wanna be importing. So I get the file path to that blend file. And then I call into this function right here, passing the path, uh, saying that I don't want a link, I wanna actually modify the objects that I'm importing. And uh, let me go ahead and remove this. So let's go ahead and just save this script right now and see what that gives us. I'm gonna actually move this a bit like that so we can see a bit more of Blender and I'm gonna save the script. And of course I forgot an import. Uh, and another feature of the script that if you made a mistake, right, it doesn't crash Blender or anything, right? It just gives you, uh, you can see right here down below that pathlib is not defined, right? So my script is broken at this point and nothing's really happening, right? Uh, VS Code's still running, Blender's still running, so it's okay to make mistakes as well. And let me go ahead and import pathlib like that and saving our script again now imports those objects. And let me update the script a bit more and let me take that icosphere that I see in the scene and let's scale it by two. I'm creating a new variable called uh, ico object and I'm getting the data objects in particular and I need to use the name of this icosphere which is just icosphere like that and let's go ahead and scale it by two and let's save it and of course I made a typo and you can see that the icosphere was scaled. All right, I hope that you see the power and potential behind this workflow. And if you haven't yet set up VS Code for iterating on Blender, Python scripts, and add-ons, make sure to check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.